Every kid has a great story to tell. Have one? Well, we're listening. Send your best story to the New Indian Express's Bookworm Junior Summer Stories Contest and you could just end up becoming an author over the summer. What are you waiting for? Get writing. Hindustan Institute of Technology and Science. Take your first step toward a future in excellence. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the New Indian Express's Let's Debate. We are bringing together some of India's top students with some of the best debates to talk about their views on the topic and also to give us a lot to think about because if we can't look to our youth for inspiration and to really understand the decencies that debate preserves, well, I don't know where we're really going to look. And with that in mind, let me now welcome our house of debaters as well as our two judges. Before I get to that, let me give you the motion for today. The motion is India's education system does not foster education and it's outdated. Well, this is something that's been debated hotly, especially with the new education policy just around the spectrum. And I'm sure we're going to hear a lot of that from both sides and we're really looking forward to it. Today with us, we have two very, very eminent judges. One of them, of course, is somebody who I've looked up to for a great many years. Uh, I, Dr. R. W. Alexander Jesudasan was of course the principal of the Madras Christian College for a great many years. It's the college where I studied, so I've known him very, very personally. Uh, he was also the secretary of the college for almost 12 years. He has 34 years in education. He's a zoologist, he's an entomologist, and he's somebody who's very visionary because he really looks at innovation in education. He's also a musician. This is not something that a lot of people know. He plays the guitar, and I think that's what he does in his downtime. He's currently with the Hindustan Institute of Technology and Sciences. He's the pro-vice chancellor there, and I know that he's doing a lot for the students during this very, very difficult year. Thank you, Dr. Jesudasan, for being with us, for consenting to be with us, and consenting to judge these kids on this very, very important topic. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be younger by many, many years, to be with <laughs> these bright students. Thank you very much. We also have from within the New Indian Express, I'd like to welcome my friend and colleague Rama Ramanan. Rama, of course, has spent a great many years in the industry. She's now the associate editor of the New Indian Express. She heads our City Express supplement here in Chennai. Uh, she writes features on food, travel. She's a great blogger. She's a she's an Instagram celebrity by her own regard. She's also been studying in the US in her younger years. She was at Rochester and she brings a wealth of experience with her. I'm sure she's got lots to tell you about public speaking. Thank you, Rama, for being with us. Thank you, Danny. I'm glad to be here and uh, looking forward to listening to everybody. You know what the topic is, you know which side of the motion you're on. So without further ado, let me now call on our first speaker to argue for the motion. Manish, may I invite you to speak, please? I have a demand to make to the whole of mankind. A demand that has the potential to change humanity forever. A demand that will be the start of a revolution, an education revolution. Before I go on and on about this demand, I want all of us to take a step back and first of all, figure out what education is and what its goals are. Let's all think together. What do you think is education? You see, the word education is derived from the Latin word edus, which means to bring forth or to bring forward. So the word education literally means to bring forth one's potential, to bring out their talent and skills and to enhance them, to open the cage of ignorance and to let their imagination soar high, to bring out their ideas and thoughts 
and to enable them to write their own legacy but if you are like me and you attend school you know that the education that they give you has nothing to do with what i just said i've never experienced anything but suffocation at school to be honest suffocated by the information that they dump on top of all of our heads and information that they make us memorize and judge us upon and also at school i was told not to think apparently the thinking had already been done by people like newton and galileo kids sit in class bored to the core as the school bores into their minds and approves any creativity individuality light and color that is within them and anyone who claims that india's education system fosters innovation i would say when is the last time you were told to close your books and notes and to imagine or think when were you asked to innovate no that science project where you had to follow your teacher step by step does not count when was the last time your teacher asked you what you would have done in place of louis 16 or gandhi instead of just telling us about them moreover we students are oppressed in school and take it from a student we are not only oppressed but our lives are taken away from us the right to speech the right to freedom of expression the right to life is getting violated in most schools i say that students right to life is taken away well not literally but their life is controlled and confined their dreams are often crushed and their happiness never heard of to me such a student does not even live does not have a life for life does not simply mean breathing to me life or living means to be to be what we dream ourselves to be to be what we cherish and to live a life that is really worth well i learned that india attained its independence in the year 1947 as all of you know here but if you really think about it india has not yet attained its freedom see the freedom movement was not necessarily only against the british it was against ideas of inequality injustice social hierarchy and discrimination but in schools today i see all of this they define us by the marks and they discriminate us based on that they classify us as weak students and like students who are capable based on a number and that's just not right and the reason that i say in and that is the reason i say that india is yet to be free so here we go again i have a demand to make to the whole of mankind a demand against the oppressor and a demand to end all wrongs a demand that has the potential to change humanity and its trajectory forever a demand to obtain freedom once again a demand to rewrite our past and lead our future into brightness a demand that the education system reforms itself and remember this when a group is oppressed the group revolts but when that group happens to be kids and students they are often underestimated but don't make that mistake for this is just the dawn of the student revolution mark my words today this is just the dawn of a revolution never seen before in history an education revolution a student revolution thank you so much for this opportunity and for listening to me thank you thank you manish very powerful in fact uh, a very famous man once said that every revolution in the history of time always began with the students and how they were not happy with life as it were well to defend the motion let me now invite to talk against the motion snehal jalan snehal snehal would i request you to please please i am snehal jalan and i will be speaking against the motion as i was preparing for this debate my mind kept going over the various innovative ways my friends had come up with i could not help but think about the various innovative ways they had used to sleep in class and not get caught the innovation in sneaking chocolates into class and definitely the innovation they used for teamwork methods during exams now i am sure that such innovation has been used by our friends speaking for the motion as well and hence there is no way we should trust their opinion on this debate jokes apart there does exist an unfortunate trend of blaming the education system when anything goes wrong i acknowledge the flaws but has it not stood through the test of time has it not been successful in producing top level doctors engineers businessmen is it really that outdated if it still stands strong in proving its purpose the indian education system provides a rigorous syllabus and subject choices to guarantee specialization specialization is the need of the hour to guarantee advanced knowledge 
rather than pressurizing students to learn subjects which are, they are not interested in or which will not aid them in their future careers the end uh, the indian education system is not outdated because it guides the students into a tried and tested ecosystem which only brings out the best similarly we cannot consider something to be outdated when change is just on the corner the new education policy 2020 is testament to that it aims for an inclusive environment ending the digital divide um providing better te uh, teachers to the rural areas and introducing new languages and subject choices including classical and traditional ones such as prakrit the indian education system overhaul truly brings out the best of both worlds the right to education act covers compulsory education from for children aged between 4 to 16 years but the new policy will increase the um, range from 3 to 18 offering more children a better future and many more opportunities it also plans um it also plans to make education more divyang friendly and on par with the current times by increasing the use of technology to help both students and teachers compared to the us education system which burdens the students and the heavy uh, student loans the indian education system is robust secure job oriented and definitely not outdated coming to innovation this is achieved by sparking creativity in our minds be it including harry potter in the syllabus making students more excited to study rather than thinking of it as a chore or extracurricular activities or competitions these foster innovation even this debate challenges students to think analyze and question india despite being a fledgling democracy for only 70 years has three universities in the qs 200 top ranking our education system is not outdated and definitely fosters innovation thank you thank you so much snehal that was extremely well put could i now invite to speak for the motion shyamananda sethi shyamananda if you're good to go your time begins now as a topic education system you have seen various stages of education system in india now the stage is such a condition that we cannot say that indian education system is fostering innovation and it is outdated we could say because now in various surveys i have seen that 43% of of the indian economy runs by 43% of unemployment you know the foreign universities like stanford university harvard university watson university run more open projects case studies but indian education system lacks that and because of this the indian education system is being affected in various ways because in the private universities that they were they retain very poor and very incompetent faculties which could not train the young wonders who are who are having a big dream to score, to score the aims like doctors and engineers so uh, you are uh, you have seen various colleges they have very uh, incompetent faculties they come and stand as a professor as a lecturer in front of students but they don't have the quality my first point is that the indian education system should foster not only by changing the techniques of studies but also by bringing competent students who have competent teachers as well as who are interested to study you know in various years you have seen the indian economic system has been changed thoroughly with the change in time because of incompetent students now the literacy rate of india is 93% on paper because if the if the if the literacy rate is 93% then why the indian economy cannot progress throughout the year the main problem is that the learning mindset of the students the mindset should be changed by the trained teachers so that they could uh, they could study thoroughly whatever they start and they should given real life projects so that they could find what is the problem by solving projects that the indian education system is very vital for the future of india you have seen many uh, students who have scored good marks and even perfect marks in very uh, in the uh, in the interviews 
and uh, I, the, I mean that they should uh, score max as well as they should innovate because innovation will bring change in our country. And you have seen that all processes are still running out. And for these reasons, India is lacking behind. And uh, you have seen other universities are, co are compared to Indian universities in syllabus, they are less, but they are competent because they have the knowledge. They are having well-formed mind, which could fight with difficulties while progressing. But Indians have the theoretical knowledge, but they don't have innovation and the power of solving problems. So this can be done by bringing new education policies, by innovating the syllabus and making, uh, creating, uh, creating a marks for the innovation of the students. This would bring economical change as well as progress in our future of the country. And my point of view is that to retain the lecturers, because lecturers are the most vital part of the student's life who will bring out the interesting and the mindset of the students to increase the demand of getting knowledge rather than getting good salaries and good jobs by scoring by scoring the jobs with uh, marks is not important rather than scoring the jobs with good skill innovation and passion for that is rather more than important thank you thank you so much Shamananda. that was on the clock uh, may I now invite our next speaker, Anya Karizma Grimm. Anya, if you're good to go, as soon as you heard the ping, you can go. Thank you. A good education is the foundation for a better future. Very well said by Elizabeth Warren. Education in India is organic as it keeps growing and evolves with time and the human minds too. Education is the foremost sector that shoulders the biggest responsibility of shaping the future of the nation. For the country to play a rightful role, it is imperative that the government takes education as a major area for intervention. A very good evening to all ladies and gentlemen. Today, I stand before you speaking against the motion, Indian education system does not foster innovation and is outdated. Students are allowed to select only one stream. And if they select any stream, then they can't study the subject of the opposite stream. And this is often very problematic because many students may have interest in more than one subject, but the government has changed this. Scholars can now choose subjects with their own flexibility. After this execution of this policy, students can study history with chemistry and physics with politics. This is often a tremendous initiative taken by our government. New education system learning begins at the age of three preparatory stage for the subsequent two years during which focus is upon playing activities based on classroom structure. Another interesting and positive feature of NEP is related to the progress report card, which is handed to the students at the end of the year. Point of tests and exams, that assessment is going to be done by not only the teachers, but also the students who self-evaluate themselves with their performances within the whole year. This is definitely a really useful step because critical thinking may be a vital aspect to measure one's efforts. General view states that there is a drag of root learning within the Indian education system designed in such a method that requires mugging up of concepts in order to clear the exams. My dear friends, research suggest, suggests that 85% of the cumulative brain development in a child happens by the age of six, with the first five years dedicated to foundational learning, followed by a regularly assessed academic growth. The education system will enable teachers and educationists everywhere to provide better learning outcomes for students both remotely and in the classroom, even via visual aid. Online classes, which became the only way of education during the pandemic. Educators are increasingly using technology such as gamification, augmented reality, visual reality to increase the level of interest in the students and ensure maximum retention. Moreover, data-driven technology is being used to access the understanding of students and identify the gaps in learning through content analysis. During COVID-19 pandemic, we learned the benefits of e-learning. Online are footprints across India to ensure that students can learn from technology. I would like to conclude by saying education in India has greatly improved 
improved over the past decade. Education needs innovation to keep it fresh and relevant. It is not just the teachers and educators who form it, but also the students who shape it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anya. Teachers are indeed the backbone of this entire system, and I don't think we can rely on anybody else. No technology can ever replace the value of a great teacher. I'm sure everybody agrees with that. Uh, could I now invite to speak for the motion, Navneet V. Shankar. Navneet, if you're ready to speak, as soon as you hear the ding, you can get started. The function of education is to teach one to think intensively and critically. Good afternoon, all. My name is Navneet V. Shankar and I am speaking for the motion. India's education system does not foster innovation and is outdated. The strongest weapon in a person's arsenal is his creativity. Creativity is a thriving force that simply needs to be highlighted. Creativity helps to create men who are capable of doing new, new things, not simply of repeating what other generations have done. However, the Indian education system has certainly failed in bringing out creativity. This system is in incentivizing hyper-competitiveness rather than encouraging co-learning. Blind grade system is another factor that is killing creativity in students. The education system does not support the intellectual brain of students. The main concern is to get through the school with good grades this way, slow learners get discouraged as marks are taken as the assessment of students' talent. Everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it'll live its whole life believing that it's stupid. So said Albert Einstein. A few other fa faults of the Indian education system are most subjects such as chemistry and focus and physics focus on textbook knowledge when they could be fun, applied subjects to learn. There's less a focus on physical education and sports and more focus on studying all day long. We all remember the saying, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. There's a lesser focus on character building as many schools do not have lessons on etiquette and manners. The subject matter and homework put a tremendous amount of stress on students which is incredibly difficult for many to bear. Since most knowledge is only memorized and not retained for the long run, students feel completely lost after school. This is also a reason for unemployment. Examinations are focused on results rather than continuous long-term learning. Almost all Indians who have achieved great heights in their life completed their education abroad, including leaders of tech giants like Satya Nadella and Sundar Pichai. In the Times Higher Education World Reputation Rankings 2020, the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, is the only Indian institute that ranks above 150. In a country of, with a population of almost 1.3 billion people, only 40,000 40, patent applications are received every year, whereas in other countries like China and USA, almost 300,000 patent applications are received per year. All of these clearly point out that the Indian education system is outdated and kills creativity, thereby hindering innovation. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Navneet. I think you really sort of stuck a stake in the heart of that argument with pointing out the number of patents and how we're lagging behind several countries. To now speak against the motion, may I invite Aishita Gundetti. Aishita, if you're good to go, as soon as you hear that ping, your time will start. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Aishita Gundeti from Sujitra Academy, and today I will be talking about why India's education system fosters innovation and is up to date. If you look back to even a decade ago, you will observe that the Indian educational system has developed tremendously. The Indian government grants the right to education, so every child under 14 can get educated. Nowadays, there are various subjects available to students, from standard subjects like social and science, all the way to art, music, ICT, physical ex education, etc. Although only some schools provide these options, we can deny that the Indian educational system has a good variety of courses to offer. It's a work in progress. I mean, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? In India, continuous and comprehensive evaluation is conducted. That's quite a few exams if you ask me. 
even though students dread them, <laughs> aka me, it's the best way to understand if the student is following or not. Some countries don't flunk students under eighth grade, even if they get an F in most of their tests, just because ninth grade is when things become important. But in India, schools ensure that all the way from the basics, students understand what's happening. Even if someone is struggling to keep up with academics, schools provide special classes for that person. They give extra attention to those in need and kudos to those teachers who take that special care. Fun fact, India also has the world's largest university, Indira Gandhi National Open University, which offers education for literally anyone, irrespective of anything from the past or present. The NEP 2020 also proves that the government is making an effort to improve the quality of education for everyone. With the Indian educational system evolving, this helps so many families get back on their feet and beat poverty. That is such an extraordinary thing if you ask me. Keeping the problems of India in mind, our education system also makes reservations so that everyone is given an equal opportunity. Of course, we shouldn't be in the situation where the government has to provide reservations to ensure equality, but at least now, there is an equal opportunity available in the education system. The mental health of students is also a major concern. And for that, some schools started having life skill classes or counseling, which is the best thing. This could change the lives of so many students. Educational methods have also become so open. Students don't have to sit and read about how books, how a plant grows anymore. They can just do the activity themselves. This helps children to learn to do things which don't necessarily have to be theoretical. It can be practical. Since education has become activity oriented, it helps children remember the process easier. Now, students have a lot of options to choose from. They can be whatever they want to be, literally. Even if someone doesn't have the proper educational qualifications to get a proper job, they can just use the skills they learned as a child to pursue something else. For example, painting. There's no guarantee that he or she will be successful, but with the right mix of talent, social media awareness, and a bit of hard work, students can achieve their dreams and taste success in non-academic areas as well. Indian schools also hold students accountable for their actions. They make sure that students know what's right and wrong. Even though most Indian teachers are strict compared to other teachers, they prepare their students for the real world where there will be consequences. To sum it all up, I believe that the Indian educational system does foster innovation and is up to date because one, the development of our education system, two, the right to education, three, the variety of subjects available, four, constant tests to check on the students' performance, five, the NEP 2020, which shows that the government is making an effort to make the educational system even better than it already is, six, the government making reservations for those in need, seven, mental health being a priority, eight, important skills which will be useful are taught from a young age, and lastly, nine students being accountable for their actions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashita. I think that's the best summation I've heard in a while. Congratulations. Uh, could I now call upon to speak for the motion, Kavin, Kavin Siddharth? And today, I'm here to speak upon how India's education system does not foster innovation and is completely updated. So when was this Indian education system that we follow currently introduced? The Indian education system was introduced by the British back in the early 19th century. But I'm not coming to say that it wasn't changed at all. It was changed and it is changing, but it is very late. The British themselves have changed their education system completely more than three times but we are almost using the same education system this shows how outdated this is you say the education system actually fosters innovation and i don't think so it does well innovation means creating something new and not learning what others have created well not much innovations are from india and the people do study. You cannot say people are not studying, but then we can say that so many doctors are going from India to other countries and India has like the highest amount of doctors. Yes, but what about artists? What about chefs? Other countries have more than that. Well, that is what innovation is. 
what do why do students think education as a burden we should make students believe that education is for their life and not make it make it so that they will think it as a burden we should make it more interesting add some fun aspects in it and not just learning every time what indian education does is rote learning they make students memorize the answers they give you the same exact question in the exam paper so that the student could write the same exact answer that they wrote in their notebook and i don't think so that is learning we should test them on their understanding and not their memorization skills well yes there should be some of those skills but it should not be everything and if you see about art and music yes they are subjects in a school so you could say that they are encouraging them but no do they give you exams on art and music in most of the schools no they don't they only give you exam on chemistry history blah blah, blah. and when parents ask what you did you what did you learn in school after you finish your school we all say that yeah the regular the normal things but we don't say what we actually learned cuz it just doesn't stay in our mind we don't well, we do not have the interest for the learnings to stay in our mind and that's why students think education as a burden and to sum up i'm saying that indian education system should focus more on innovation they should make people may they should make education fun they should also support all of the aspects of education so everyone's talent will come up the surface thank you thank you so much kavin i really appreciate some of the points in there uh, i think it is important to be very inclusive and that's something that we're all trying to do as a country uh, could i now request our next speaker speaking against the motion himanshu shekhar mohanty to talk to us the major downside of the pavin link system of education is that it is not easily affordable nowadays in india more than 37% of people are living below the poverty level therefore the they cannot afford education even at the primary level another reason for the poor quality of education is the poor quality of teachers in government schools the level of the education that government schools are not as expected and they do not possess as honest image among people the enhancing possibility is the private institution which provides degrees from private to post graduates however they are very costly and also the admission process is too complicated for for common person to access the best part of indian education system was and is in its rooted learning kanthasta as it was in ancient india this stimulates the ancient india on mind body soul improves contents and but the street in smokes uh, in a sense in the cvsc and icsc system with continuous analysis and understanding the theory com- concept the students in bound to do well in life okay the best part of india education system was and is is in its root learning mind body soul improves concentration and was the stress in books in a sense in the cbsc and however students born to do well in the exam however the annual system can be a bone 
for slow and average learn learners the understanding of various subjects and equal weight to all is another excellent way to give horizontal knowledge there is a combination of logic and ability thereby giving equal importance to the left and right brain it is such a holistic educational system okay more there moreover there are several political heads which form a great gap between the indian government and the common people a number of them take money from the government however do not utilize for the great of the common people in addition on one will find several socially forward individuals met talking the benefits of the reservation system the problem lies within the massive percentages of the radical and interruption thank you and have a nice day thank you so much amanshu i wish we could have seen you as well as we heard you but it was good having you with us anyway could i now invite the last speaker of the day nirmal raj and nirmal if you're good to go you'll be speaking for the motion when you hear the sound please take it away so uh, let me just get cleared here uh, are we real to ourselves do we really like the indian education system like say for the last time when you've actually seen your child uh, indulging in his studies with his whole mind and not just doing it for the sake of doing it like have you ever seen someone uh, not just your own child have you ever seen someone your friend your friend's child or maybe your parents uh, reading a newspaper how happy they would be if they could like how happy they are if they are like uh, doing it with their own mind they are doing it with their own pleasure without any uh, need to uh, fear their own they don't uh, have to report it to someone else but this indian education system does not allow it all we have to do is just read from the book and quote it on the news uh, quote it on the exam papers and then look you are just not based on what your marks like uh, let's just say growth learning is one of the uh, greatest example of how the indian education system is kind of ruining our uh, children today like most of the children today are just uh, learning what they read from the books and they just go on uh, ranting about it they don't uh, analyze the statements they don't read what's right and what's wrong they just ritually follow what's given in the book if something has been misprint yes they go with the same statement for years and years to get it done they don't really actually know what's right what's wrong they don't analyze the statements it may look like i'm repeating my statements again and again but this is the uh, this is the thing where we all go wrong this uh, the short learning is actually a curse for our uh, indian students and this short learning is encouraged by our current indian education system it does not foster uh, does not foster innovation in the sense that uh, most children when uh, only perform well when they are allowed to think out of the box and also with their mind thinking out of the box does not mean that you can think whatever you want however illogical it may be however emotionally present it may be but thinking uh, out of the box with your mind means a whole different thing it means that you know what is going on you know how to fix it you know how to do it and you do it that is what it means now indian education system does not allow it i am completely opposed to the indian education system of today's times like uh, for example like the modern education system. a child is left uh, a child is left to the teacher for 3 uh, years like how how the bond will be between the teacher and the student and also between the teacher and the parents they'll have a bond that is unique they'll uh, they'll have something different that is almost incomparable to any other uh, education system around the world this this is the sort of education system that we need to have in our country and we'll strive to and we'll strive for it and uh, also the uh, the education system also does not encourage the teachers to uh, to put their what they have learned into the students they just encourage what is there on the book you teach it and that's what the students need to learn and uh, also uh, all the all the time the parents can be seen taunting their students for their board exams like read well this is the only once in your lifetime that will be just based on your marks and then the ne- for the after the next two years they are just again on their 12th exams and again the same statement goes up like this rat race goes on forever and ever from the moment you are born to the moment you die this is the indian education system 
that's need to be reformed thank you for the opportunity truly nirmal the measure of a man's life is not from one exam to the other but from one achievement to the other i think everybody spoke fantastically well i know that both rama and dr jesudas and agree with me i'm going to virtually clap for you guys i thought that was phenomenal uh, congratulations everyone uh in the interest of time let's quickly run to our round of rebuttals now remember uh rebuttals are at arguments but they are an opportunity for you to get 2 minutes to rebut anything that anybody from the opposition or even from your own side said that you disagree with uh if the person that you're rebutting would like to respond they can do so in their own turn or if the judges allow it after everybody else has spoken all right you also have the option to pass and not make a rebuttal but remember rebuttals also carry points which can affect your overall score plus we're giving away an award for the best rebuttal so maybe it's not a bad idea to make that rebuttal we're going to follow the same order that we followed the first time so without further ado let me ask manish would you like to make a rebuttal so aishita you stated that schools make uh, students understand good and wrong and it makes them um, you know differentiate themselves and uh, so how do they do this they do this by punishing students violently that's the most uh, popular way of doing it corporal punishments are barbaric and it's something that proves that the indian education system is outdated violence everywhere else is a crime yet in india it's not i witnessed my classmate being hit violently last month and i myself was hit a couple of times last year so mahatma gandhi lived and died preaching non violence and ahimsa yet in his country india in his country india uh, sees very very little small children even you know 8 year olds being hit violently and that is just wrong simply for any reason to make them understand good bad you cannot hit them that's all thank you corporal punishment is a crime but it is also said spare the rod and sp- child well we don't know which side of the argument you're on but let me now ask snehal would you like to make a rebuttal ak sudhar um i'm sorry if i have pronounced your name wrong so i want to ask about your point where you said that um only theory subjects like science and math have exams but um practical subjects like music and art don't so i would like to ask you would you actually want to have exams which about something which someone is born with and someone does for recreation and something that you cannot actually learn through constant classes would you actually want to do something like that which you cannot be trained for and would that not set the students apart who do not who are not born with the natural talent of singing or maybe drawing shamananda could i ask you if you have a rebuttal please thank you sir i don't have a rebuttal pass thank you very much anya would you like to make a rebuttal a kevin sadar that he said that indian education system is all about rote learning and if this is true in in this manner if they are preparing what are what if they are preparing the students for the entrance exam that shows a child's ability for the chosen profession they have chosen for themselves that's it thank you very much could i now now ask navneet if you would like to make a rebuttal Snehal, you said that's uh, you know about some people being born with something, and how the you know exam should not be conducted for every everyone based on uh, a talent that only few people have. Is it not same the exact other way? You said that some people are born with talent for music and drawing, and it's not fair to conduct exams about them. Is it not you know it's not fair to uh, conduct exams for people who are weak in studies? In if you you know if, from your perspective, Aishita, would you like to make a rebuttal? First I would like to talk about what Manish said. Uh hitting is bad, yes, and that only like mostly only takes place in the rural areas now. And I would like to take a recent example. On one of the news channels there was a incident of a child getting beaten very badly and when it was brought to the media's attention there was action taken. So it like hitting students that is not a, like not that is not acceptable yes but that also falls underneath like the co- communication part like if the students can't like communicate to like media and everyone for help that's not like anything related to the educational system i would also like to say manish and shyamananda you both said that um education does not have activities and i would like to disagree because just like you like the example that i took uh a plant growing yes that counts because the students know what they're supposed to do they know the procedure they'll remember it better and 
And Manish, you said that uh, discrimination is taking place. I don't think discrimination is taking place. Maybe partiality is taking place, but I don't think the word discrimination should be used here. Uh, Shyamananda, you said that uh, you said bringing competent students. Students, they're not supposed to be competent. Like all students are the same. It's the teacher's job to uh, educate the children. And I think the teachers are doing a great job at that. And uh, Navaneeth, you said um, physical education is not as important as like normal education. And I disagree with that. Physical education, every single school, they have games and that counts under physical education. And um, also uh, Nirmal, you said that there's nothing, th there's nothing wrong with flaunting the marks. Like uh, Daniel Sir said, it's, big, they can, it's an achievement. So they can flaunt about it. But I don't I think it's wrong to say that they only flaunt about the marks. That's about it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aishita. That was a rapid but very comprehensive rebuttal, I must say. Kavin, do you have a rebuttal for us? Uh, a rebuttal to the statement that Aishita said, where she said that every school uh, has the ga their games period. But they yes, they do have. Uh, but it's not in focus. Like, no one emphasizes on the games period. Like some teachers punish their children by saying, you do not have games period today. You have to uh, do this homework because they've not done their homework or other reasons. Okay, now I would like to rebuttal about how Aishita said about the corporal punishment. It's not only given in rural areas. There is no clear proof that it is only given in rural areas. It's also given in cities. What? It's given in almost every big city. The government schools, they mostly have corporal punishment and it does not give the child or teach them what is right and what is wrong. It only teaches them hate and anger. Thank you. And finally, Nirmal, could I ask if you have a rebuttal to make? Yeah, the thing is that, uh, just as Ashita said, uh, students are not flaunting about their marks. They're flaunting about their parents' success. They're flaunting about their teacher's success in making them an animal which only which only greets for marks. They don't flaunt it for them. Uh, they don't flaunt it for uh, having a social status. Social status. They flaunt it for. Uh, they just flaunt it. Like they don't have any reason to uh, reason to flaunt it. What I'm saying is, students don't flaunt their students don't flaunt their imagination, their memory. They only flaunt what is given on the books, and uh, flaunting what is already given does not have any uh, does not have any uh, any other uh, benefits, or so as to speak, any other uh, remarkable implications that may uh, that may affect the life of an individual. What what we need to focus on is the innovation, the in innovative mind of the student or a children should be fostered. It, that is what today we are speaking about and the Indian education system clearly does not help about it. So uh, that was my rebuttal. Thank you. Thank you so much Nirmal. I know uh, Snehal wanted to say something. Snehal, you wanted to respond to somebody. Uh, first of all, I would like to um, talk about how um, one of them um, gave a rebuttal to me about how um, exams should not be taken because they also have um, things that people are born with, um, like how people are good at studies and not. So I would like to say that um, things such as music is something that you are actually born with. You, you can either sing or you cannot sing. So even if you go to music classes, they cannot change the way your vocal cords are set. But um, something theo theoretical such as science or math is something that you learn. Nobody is born knowing all of Einstein's formulas. They also go to the same classes as the other children and they learn that. Um, also, uh, Navneet, you said uh, about how University of the Bangalore is the only one in the top 200 list. I would like to counter that by informing you that IIT Delhi and IIT Mumbai are also on that list, respectively on uh, point 150 and 176. Also, um, Manish said something about corporal, punish corporal punishment about being taking place in cities as well. Well, that is not something that the education system um, encourages and it is actually a crime. So uh, yes, you should report that. And um, Nirmal right now, he said about 
children flaunting their parents successes that is not something once again that the education system has taught you that is something you do because you want to do it and it has nothing to do with the education system also you said how flaunting marks uh, brings no actual benefit well a lot of times children do don't do things because of a benefit benefit they do it because they are children and they like to be appreciated for their efforts because writing exams also takes a lot of effort by paying attention class by um, actually revising those concepts and doing your best so yes sometimes children do things because they like to be appreciated and not because it has a particular benefit thank you and that's human psychology for you all right if nobody has anything more to say does anybody have the last word yeah can i just say something okay i'm going to give you guys 30 seconds but i'm going to hold you to that 30 seconds on the clock all right go for it so aishita said that discrimination does not take place well in this very debate people called some students slow learners and some fast learners see there are only people who are interested in learning there are no slow learners or fast learners everyone can learn learning is something and uh that is inbuilt like it's something that you have as a child curious everyone is born with curiosity and the thirst to learn so um please i i would like to say that discrimination does take place and in many ways in schools yeah all right nirmal uh they are not flaunt uh, it's about not their flaunting their marks uh, what i'm talking about is their uh, will to innovate they they just can uh, they just can't like read something from the book and uh, move about it just by having it thrown into their mind i want what i want to convey is that student must learn it using innovative ways using unique ways they should learn it but not by the textbook memory they should learn it by practicality like uh, if uh, e equal to mc square is a formula that uh, can be applied in everyday life how would you learn it would you just uh, write on it and practice it every day or do you actually use it in the field that it requires that's what i have to say about it Okay, Aishita, I'm going to give you 20 seconds, and Navneet, you can finish with 20 seconds after that, and that's it. 20 seconds. Okay. Uh, Kevin said that games are being taken away, and that is why physical education, like, it doesn't take place in schools. But uh, that is a punishment, and that's better than whatever hitting and what what not you were saying. And that is the children's fault. It, they're not purposefully taking away the games period. Like I said in my speech. Uh, mm. students are held accountable for their actions so if they made a mistake and games is taken away there's nothing wrong in that that is not the educational system's fault and like uh manish said discrimination uh yes there are slow learners there's fast learners but that's not discrimination there's different types of learners but and that is not the definition of discrimination i'm yeah i'm done thank you thank you ashita navneet the absolute last word 20 seconds on the clock yeah ashita you said about you not using the word discrimination yeah, if if you're having the same exam for you know two completely different people in the name of equality then aren't you actually discriminating you know it doesn't make sense but you're actually discriminating between two different people by making them by, uh, you know asking them to take the same exam and learn the same lessons in the same manner not to forty different people by a single person Well, discrimination is a whole other debate and that's something that we can talk about for hours and hours especially in a country like India. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear young debaters, I think you did a fabulous job in the time given to you. Let me congratulate all of you. I think you all deserve a huge round of applause. Fantastic, fantastic work really picking the bones out of this topic. Dr. Jason Dasan, could I invite you to please uh, speak to our debaters and give your comments on their performance in the topic please. Uh thank you and good evening uh my dear friends, young friends. um very especially daniel asima and rama and uh, as i was listening to these um, uh, the young friends you know as i told you you brought me down by almost five decades and uh, i was just comparing myself uh, how i have would have done you know when i've given been given an opportunity to speak like this definitely definitely i would say i would have miserably failed and therefore my appreciation my kudos to each one of you it's not an exaggeration but it is simply you know an expression that you know you guys have really have done exceedingly well all of you my my compliments on behalf of rama and myself you know we would like to congratulate you for uh, for your great exposition this evening and really appreciate i'm sure with at this age you know less than 10 and 10 you are of this caliber i can imagine when you reach my age of 50 uh, you know 58 or 59 i can imagine what a kind of an orator india would have produced you know this is what i think is the is the 
uh, best point that I can think of. I mean, I can imagine you as great Indian ambassadors. I think, I, I, I mean, as you travel from this age up, up. Uh, my dear friends, uh, it has been great listening to each one of you. And uh, I really enjoyed, uh, along with the others, you know, the kind of articulation that you have done, the kind of uh, homework that you have done, the kind of preparation, the kind of passion that you had, whether you have spoken for or against it, against the motion, it has been really spectacular. And it was a treat to listen to each one of you. And um, some of the tips I think that uh, you already have had um, in your presentation, but I think for some you need to really accelerate, is that uh, the, I mean, you need to really prepare well. You know, uh, you should be satisfied that you are really prepared well and you have fit in well, you have knit the points together. That I think you, you, should, you can still work on it and then move on. Uh, number two, I think you need to have the passion for the topic whether it is for or against, that passion, that inward passion has to be there. Once that is there, I think automatically the thoughts would, uh, would flow. And you should also remember that the presentation that you have made, whether on the small screen or on the big, big screen, or, you know, uh, you're doing it, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, as, as a speaker, it should be memorable. People should remember that this is the person who sp spoke like that. I think to that extent, I think you need to really work really well. And uh, one important point, whenever you make a presentation, you need to remember that it is a presentation, not a rehearsal. Now, every presentation that you make, I think should be regarded that this is your final presentation and therefore, and therefore you can give your best to it and there, thereby you will also be satisfied that you have done the best. Of course, you need to have charisma. Uh, you need to have the voice modulation, uh, body language, movement, posture. I think I could see that uh, in your presentation. And uh, I think in totality, I think it has been a great evening. And I, I'm really appreciative of each one of you. And I see a great India through you. Kudos and congratulations. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Jesudasan. I think one thing that we can take away from Dr. Jesudasan as he just spoke now is every word that Dr. Jesudasan said was enunciated with so much of impact. I think that's what comes after years of being in the teaching profession. You know, uh, Most of us just speak as a manner of communication and we're talking to people. Uh, this is something that I just observed and I think it's a fantastic lesson for all of us to make each word count literally like that. Thank you, Dr. Jay Sudarsan. Rama, could I have you say a few words to our young friends today? Hi, everyone. It was great listening to everybody. Um, just like uh, Dr. Jay Sudarsan said, it, you know, listen to all of you took me back to my years of schooling that, you know, we would take part in debates and elocution competition and I'd be so scared to just even, you know, uh, register my name because I never considered myself as a public speaker. So, but it was great uh, to see uh, each one of you filled with so much confidence and, you know, you knew what you were talking about and you really wanted to make your point come across and you made sure you had a rebuttal for everything. So, uh, I think it's important that, uh, uh, what I also noticed is that everybody was paying attention to the other speaker. Uh, and you knew what points to pick and use that as a rebuttal, which was great. So uh, good luck to all of you and uh, you know, have a great summer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Jay Sudarsan, uh, will you be making the announcements of our three winners today? Of course, it's my privilege uh, that I think Rama has been kind enough to give it to me and I take immense pleasure in uh, doing so. The uh, person who has made the finest uh, point is... Um, amongst uh, the people who are there only. I'm not going to pick up anyone from outside. It is Gundati Ashita. Congratulations, Ashita. You win yourself a thousand rupee gift voucher from Link Pens. Congratulations to you. Counter-Strike is uh, none other than Navneet. Congratulations, Navneet. You win best rebuttal in this debate. You also get yourself a voucher from Link Pens. I hope you enjoy writing. Lighter side uh, uh, goes to Sneha. Congratulations, Nehal. You win our award for the most inventive and the most humorous speaker. Congratulations. A thousand rupee gift voucher to you from our gift partner, Link, as well. Congratulations, all three of you. That was absolutely fabulous. One thing that I forgot to mention to both our judges, and I, I don't know if they knew this earlier, was that uh, Dr. Jesudasan and Rama, none of, the, none of our debaters here today knew whether they were speaking for or against the motion till they got to the debate. 
So they both they prepared for both sides of the debate. They got here and we surprised them by saying, "Okay, you're for and you're against." And uh, so they had that little bit of uh, of uncertainty about. They didn't know which side to talk for. And I think it's great that you get to a debate and you have conviction for both sides because you know you're in it for the debate and in the spirit of debate. Because as a nation, I think what we need is healthy debate. And for all of you to be great agents of change, you need to be able to listen to the other person and to be able to tell them what's on your mind. And with that, I'd like to thank our judges. I'd like to thank all our debaters. This is the New Indian Express's Let's Debate. I'd like to thank our sponsors, HITS and MEIL, for being with us. It's been a great evening. All the best, everybody. Stay safe and keep debating. Remember, you can vote for your favorite debater right here at www.edxlive.com. Remember, every vote counts. Our voting lines are open for 48 hours, so get voting right now. This debate was brought to you by the Hindustan Institute of Technology and Sciences and MEIL. Every kid has a great story to tell. Have one? Well, we're listening. Send your best story to the New Indian Express's Bookworm Junior Summer Stories Contest and you could just end up becoming an author over the summer. What are you waiting for? Get writing.